I have the enviable responsibility for summing this up for the evening for us and bringing closure for the evening. Um, and I wanted to first start out by saying my personal thank you to many of the people who are in the room, who are some of the people that I have feel most privileged to have been able to work with in my life. And as um, I, I think of, I think of Jim's statement about the 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 early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Gets the cheese, and I think that a lot of us in the room are second mice. I feel like I'm a I'm a second mouse. I sort of want to start a group of us who say we are second mice, and a lot of the folks here were the first mice and the one who took the brunt of what came at them and paid an extremely high price. And one of the things I wanted to reflect on as we finish here is the extremely high price that we have also seen all of these people and those people pay over the course of their careers, who did this for nothing, at extraordinary personal, family, and financial cost for themselves and the people around them. But a lot of these folks and a lot of us represent to me one of my favorite quotes, which is by a different musician, by Jerry Garcia, which is that somebody has to do something and it's just incredibly pathetic that it has to be us. I think that as we talk about the heroes that we have with us today, and they are our heroes and some of the greatest unsung people in our country, we also run that risk of looking at them too high up and too far away. That talk to them about not their last case, but their first. I know from Benny talking about that first case of walking in and not being prepared and sitting down with someone and then not having the lawyer show up and the farmer turning to him and saying, so what do I do? And having to figure it out in the moment and walking away vowing never to walk in to a hearing again unprepared. And what I take away from the people that I've gotten the chance to work with is Man, don't play poker with them. Because this is the most competitive, will-to-win group of people I've ever known in my life. I'm serious. I've done, I've done it. As we finish this day, there's a lot of us that with this 30th anniversary are looking at the past. And to quote Faulkner, the past is never dead. It's not even past. And if you talk to a lot of the advocates that were here, many of them took their last farmer call yesterday and have been doing it for 30 years. And it is amazing to me that in all of the organizing that we're talking about and all of the community that we're talking about and all of the love that we're talking about, the start of that is in isolation. It is in a moment when a family or a person sits at a table and realizes they don't know the way out. They don't know what to do. And the question is, when they hit that moment, who is there to provide that answer? And if nothing else, you know, the goal of advocacy and the goal of what we have created here is what it has been from the beginning, which is what many of us talk about in the general. How do we save the family farm? How do we make family farms more sustainable? Is about this family farm. How do we save this farm? How do we make this farm more sustainable? How do we keep this farm into the next generation and the next market? And I'm going to close this day because all of what we do in this is about, all of what we are trying to do here is about connecting this work of the individuals in the field with the organizing and to know that when we do this together, we do great things and when we do it separately, we do not. And this is a quote, one of my favorites from Gary Paulson, 
and everything we are, all that we can ever be, all the Einsteins and babies and love and hate, all the joy and sadness and sex and wanting and liking and disliking, all the soft summer breezes on cheeks and first snowflakes, all the Van Goghs and Rembrandts and Mozarts and Mahlers and Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln and Gandhi and Jesus Christ, all of that, every single damn thing that we are or ever will be is dependent on six inches of topsoil and the fact that the rain comes when it is needed and does not come when it is not needed. Everything, every single thing. And when we talk about advocacy, people say, well, you're talking about, you know, 75 people a year. That's how many farmers is that? And I want to, being where we are, I want to finish with this. And I'm going to ask a couple friends to come up and help me really close this out from Matthew. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountain and go in search of the one that is lost? And so I'm going to ask Shirley and Charles and a couple of my friends to come up and we're going to close this out together because, you know, we talk too much and sing too little. So you all want to do one and then we'll do the do one together? Go for it. The secret of the civil rights movement was the blood that ran through the blood, the music that ran through the blood of the movement, leading us into sound. And much of the work of farming and farmers has to do with pressing our way and staying the course and not letting anything turn us around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Oh, turn me around. Oh, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on the walk. This little light of mine.